My apologies to Alice Cooper and the Hollywood Vampires. I got to interrupt schools out because our special guest is standing by. He's got a book that you need to pick up. Punk Rock, Blitzkrieg, My Life is a Ramon. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Marky Ramon to the show. How you doing, sir? Good morning. How are you? Okay. I'm fantastic. I appreciate you taking the time. I was privileged, Marky, to have you on my show kind of around this time last year. And I got the, yeah. Yeah, I got the email saying that that you were uh, doing more interviews, and of course I had to say yes. I mean, it was... Oh, thank you. You know, it was a pleasure talking to you then, and, uh, uh, and here we go again. So so the book's been out for a little while, Marky, and it seems like everybody's loving it, right? For about a year, I can't... It's amazing that I got to this point where um, you sell the hardcover, uh, that's what the company does, and then uh, it sells a certain amount, and then it becomes a soft cover. so that's how they work it, and... Um, uh, very grateful that uh, I've been getting all these uh, great reviews and people telling me how much they like it. You don't know that when you're writing it, but uh, that was that's the result. You know, I uh, it took five years to to write, and uh, you never know what's going to happen at the end. You know, right? Well, it's impressive that, uh, like you said, it's now uh, in soft cover. Is it weird, Marky? Like when you go to a bookstore and you see yourself? Maybe not at this point, but. Right? I mean, that's got to be a little strange feeling yeah, at first. It, it's like uh, I can equate that to an album. When you, you know, when, when there used to be albums and CDs in the stores, uh, and, you, and you're there, and it's, uh, it's, a, it's a really it's a good feeling, you know, that uh, you work hard and you accomplish that, and uh, you, you just, uh, just see it, and people are, are liking it, you know? Yeah, no, they're totally liking it. So it, has it gotten to the point where they've maybe asked you about writing another book? or <clears throat> Possibility. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, it's already, it's all, also in Kindle edition. Mm-hmm. So uh, when, you not, when you see a book doing well like that, you say, oh, maybe I'll write a, another book. What, though? You know, right. <laughs> everything that I've uh, put down in that book, uh, there's really not that much left to to talk about about already that I that, uh, that I wrote. Sure. I wouldn't mind writing a children's book or uh, you know something else like maybe a sci-fi uh, story because mm-hmm. I was always into sci-fi. So you know who knows what's going to come down the road, but uh, people do have asked me that. Well, I think it would be it would be awesome to see. Um, I, I don't want to be a Debbie Downer, but I. You know, I want to talk about Lemmy for a second. I, I just finally watched the documentary that you were you had a part in for yeah. Lemmy, and he obviously passed yeah. away. And uh, I just wanted to get your thoughts on that. I never got to meet Lemmy, but he seems like he was perhaps one of the most unique individuals ever, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> he certainly was a uh, very soft-spoken, uh, nice guy. Uh, basically, uh, he was, he was a historian when he wasn't, uh, uh, playing music. And, uh, the, in his home, he had a lot of collectibles of, uh, civil, civil war memorabilia, World War I, II. He was interested in American history, which was, which was really, really great. Uh, he, uh, played his instrument, uh, his bass guitar, unbelievably. Uh, he had a unique voice. And uh, obviously he was doing something right because right, he amassed a huge following. You right. Know? He seems like he was just a, a cool guy. And then, you know, of course we lose Definitely. David We lose David Bowie, and it's like they got to stop taking... cool guy. Right? they got to stop taking the good ones. I mean, it's just... It's <laughs> well, a, it's, uh, it's a bummer. Well, it's... The thing is that uh, you know uh, cancer doesn't discriminate against anybody, no matter who you are, how good or bad, how healthy or unhealthy you are. Right. It'll just seep in and just take over. You know, unfortunately, it is a bummer. Uh, changing gears, Marky, my boss, yes. here, my boss at the radio station, plays the drums in a couple bands as well, and I asked him, oh, yeah. uh, "What kind of drums has he got?" Um, I don't know what kind he has, but in the studio we have a live studio where bands come in, and we have a. Uh, that's cool. Is it a a, tam, a Tama set? Yeah, good good set. Yeah, so he wanted to know if uh, you still see your brand of uh, kind of gritty rock drummers out there, or do drummers look different in 2016? Look or play different? Uh, both. 
Oh, I don't. I don't care what anyone looks like. Sure. If they well, you know, uh, every uh, few years there's different kinds of music, and uh, I guess everyone follows a formula just so they can, I, I guess, get that hit or whatever. Uh, do I see any origin originality out there, like Keith Moon or uh, Ginger Baker or uh, you know, G- G- Buddy Rich, guys like that? Uh, you know, to talking, we're going way back mm-hmm. uh, when I, you know when I was a, a little kid. Uh, I I see I see a lot of uh, drummers who uh, who who are really good, but they pl- to me they play the same drum fills and the same beats. Which is uh, something they probably are programmed because they're hearing things that maybe they feel that that's uh, the foundation I'll I'll keep in the song mm-hmm. because I heard something that's a hit. Sure. So they will go along with that formula. And I'm sure there's there's a lot of great drummers out there who who've been influenced maybe by the technicians like Neil Peart and and guys like that. You know. So what would be your approach personally then, Marky? I mean, obviously you've been doing it for a while, but do you have anything that you do differently or that you would pass on to people that are drumming or interested in getting into it? Oh, uh, uh, listen, talk, uh, everything. Jazz, blues, uh, rock, punk rock, metal. Uh, listen just, just to create your own style and then absorb all that and then uh, try to bring your own twist to it and insert Everything that you've taken in, and hopefully uh, you one day will, uh, ha- ca- you know, catch the ears of people who uh, are saying, "Hey, this guy uh, has something different, unique." Marky, what's your? And this is this might be you, might, you know you probably get asked this a lot, but what was uh, your favorite Ramon song to play on? Is it hard to pick one? Oh uh, well, I would say two of them: "Sedated Rock and Roll High School." Perfect. Uh, the reasons uh, I want to be sedated was the first song I recorded with Johnny, Joey, and Dee Dee Ramon. Rock Law High School was because it was a movie. <laughs> right. So, you know, it, it was part of a, a wonderful soundtrack. So, uh, you know, it's on TV, you see it, and, and uh, just, uh, it was just a pleasure to be in that movie and to have uh, played on that song. You've literally, Marky, you've done everything. So I'm on your website, MarkyRamon.com. You've had a movie, you've you got radio experience, you got a book, and uh, you're heading yeah. over, uh, you're going to Spain pretty soon, aren't you? Yeah, there's a book release uh, there. Also, uh, I'm doing, I was asked to do a, uh, where, where the Ramones recorded one of our albums live, a DJ set there. Uh, I think we recorded it in nine, in... 89, Wow, I think it was, the 90s. So I'm going to go back there and do a DJ set to go inside with the book release like I did in New York at the Gramercy Theater. So that, that works well because it's, it's, you meet your friends, your fans, and um, uh, it, it, it all works together. It's like an event. Yeah, no, absolutely. I, I just, yeah, it's fun. I love it. I mean, you're... You're incredibly busy, and you're getting to do what you love, and and your fans get to see you worldwide. I mean, it. You, I, I don't know. It just seems like uh, everything's going so well for you, buddy. I'm very happy for oh, you. Oh, thank you very much. Appreciate that. So we want everybody to pick up the book, Marky Ramon, uh, Punk Rock Blitzkrieg. My life is a Ramon. The story's in there. I'm not going to give anything away. I, you know, thank you. Unbelievable. <laughs> I'm glad that you're. That you were able to put these to paper, and I'm sure that some had to be omitted, but uh, maybe that's where the second book comes in, right? Uh, that that's a possibility. <laughs> uh, I was thinking of maybe writing another book, not necessarily about the music business, but mm-hmm. maybe a sci-fi adventure, yeah. or maybe even a, a children's book. I think you could totally do it, and when it happens, you always are welcome uh, on my show, Marky, because I really enjoy talking to you, and uh, yeah, you too. And the uh, and the book is great, and now you can get it uh, in the softback, and hardback, whatever you want. And if you're in Spain and you're listening right now, Marky's coming uh-huh. for you. <laughs> okay. All right, buddy. Have a great day. Okay. You too. We'll talk to you soon, Marky Ramon. Take care, See pal. You later. Bye.